Pamela Denise Anderson is a Canadian American actress, model, TV personality, and author, best known for being a Playboy magazine model, as well as for her roles on shows like Baywatch and Home Improvement. She rose to fame after being chosen as February 1990's Playmate of the Month and went on to appear frequently on the magazine's cover. In fact, Pam holds the record of the most Playboy covers by any person. She became even more well known in the 90s after appearing as Lisa in the ABC comedy series Home Improvement, later gaining international fame for her starring role as CJ Parker in Baywatch. This role also solidified Pam's status as a sex symbol. In the years to come, Pam would star in the action comedy series VIP, as well as appear in many films and reality TV shows. Aside from her Hollywood career, she's also an activist for animal rights and endorsed PETA projects for many years. At the time of this recording, Pam has amassed herself a net worth between 12 to 20 million dollars. Hailing from Canada, Pam might just be the most famous Ladysmith resident of all time, which is the small, charming town on Vancouver Island where she lives. After years in Malibu and traveling the world, the star has finally returned home. Hey guys, it's Kara the Vampire Slayer and I'm bringing you another house tour here on Famous Entertainment. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. We post a new video daily. Today we're checking out the homes of Pamela Anderson, including the Malibu property she has on the market and what we know about her estate in Ladysmith, BC. As always, don't forget to follow me on Instagram to chat and now let's get into this video. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Miss Anderson has long lived in Malibu, even saying that for years she felt like the Malibu mascot. Years ago, Pam invited MTV Cribs into one of her former homes in Malibu, which was a charming cottage style residence. While it may have looked modest, this home still boasted six beds, five baths, and features like an outdoor bath. I collect a lot of pottery from the 30s and 40s. This is a French chandelier. I have some Italian chandeliers. I collect a lot of old antique blankets and real frilly stuff. The shabby chic style home was in the guard gated Malibu colony, but Pam moved on from here around 2007, listing the place at $6.5 million and then deciding to rent it out. After this, Pam and her sons decided to lease a large chateau style mansion in the hills of Malibu on Morning View Drive. Located north of Point Doom and overlooking the Pacific Ocean, this house looked like a French fantasy and spans 4,584 square feet with four beds and four baths. The mansion was a gated estate with access to the beach sitting on about three acres with ocean views and rolling lawns. Modeled after the finest homes in Europe, Pamela's former property also boasted a swimming pool flanked with perfect landscaping. Inside there were beamed ceilings and a large formal entryway with double staircase and rustic chandeliers. The design here was a mix of classic architecture and modern amenities, and other highlights included a great room with soaring ceilings, a gourmet kitchen, and seven fireplaces throughout. The floors were wood, stone, and antique terracotta, and there was also a beautiful indoor-outdoor room and spacious master suite with private balcony. In recent news, Pamela is selling her longtime Malibu beach house and her sweet retreat is on the market for $14.9 million. The star bought the property for $1.8 million back in 2000, but it gave the modern home a complete remodel in 2013 with the help of architect Philip Vertoch and interior designer Joss Crisanthu. Not to mention, Pam also added her own elements and signature touches to the home, like a bathtub in her bedroom. The actress has helped to design a number of homes she's owned through the years, and she's actually done the whole bathroom in the bedroom thing in nearly all of them. After years of living at the coastal compound or renting it out when she's not there, Pam is moving back to her roots after marrying her bodyguard Dan Hayhurst on Christmas Eve of 2020. The pair is focused on renovating her longtime home in BC. Pam's Malibu home is located in the chic Malibu colony community where she's lived before, actually across the road from the beach instead of right on the water but it comes with a key to access one of the most exclusive beaches around. Pam's property is hidden from the street and sits behind gates inside, spanning 5,500 square feet, and this is divided between the main house and the guest house. There are four beds and 4.5 baths throughout, as well as teak wood imported from ethical areas. The main house and guest house are separated by an elegant outdoor entertainment area with pool and dining space, and beneath the guest house, there's a second outdoor area with fire pit, hot, tub and cozy vibes. 
The overall design of Pam's property is airy and classic Malibu with floor to ceiling glass sliders and hardwood floors throughout. In 2013, Pam briefly put her Malibu Oasis on the market for $7.75 million, but then decided to offer it as a rental instead for 40 k per month. When it was up for lease, her home came furnished with features like a white piano, crystal chandeliers, white sofas, and easy chairs. Her home was centered by a spacious great room with open floor plan made up of the kitchen, living, and dining rooms, and complete with a wall of glass doors opening to the terrace. The kitchen features an Eden Island and high-end appliances including a glass-fronted refrigerator and built-in espresso machine. Pam's master suite takes up most of the second floor with an open-plan bedroom and features like a private balcony, corner fireplace, and hidden closets with built-in lighting. Half of the bathroom, a Picasso-style tub and vanity, is out in the open of the bedroom. The rest of the ensuite has dual sinks and even a sauna. Pam has said about her bedroom here. My bedroom is my favorite room in the house. I love it and it's the most sensual and clean space with a rain shower on a teak floor and sauna attached plus a bathtub in my bedroom. The terrace in the master suite also provides access to a rooftop deck with another outdoor fireplace and amazing views. Sustainable elements in Pam's Malibu house include solar panels and an irrigated vegetable garden that was also sustainably built. Holding onto the home turned out to be beneficial for Pam since she'll make a pretty profit if the property sells for even close to the $14 million plus asking price. On moving back home to Canada, Pam also explained, I feel more settled on my sustainable ranch on Vancouver Island with space to rescue more animals. It's still beachfront, one foot away from the water, and I'm lost. Now, Pam has returned to her Vancouver Island farm, a six-acre compound she bought from her grandmother decades ago, and has plans to renovate the waterfront property. Anderson and her husband have been staying in Ladysmith since 2019, often visiting even before the pandemic to fix the property up as it fell into disrepair when her grandmother passed away. Pam has always had a special place in her heart for Lady Smith, the charming and warm small town where her property is located. It was originally named Oyster Harbor and is a town on the east coast of Vancouver Island with an economy based on forestry, tourism, and agriculture. Pam's property was originally owned by her paternal grandmother who used to run a general store out of one of the buildings and it's remained in the family since. After spending a few years in the south of France, Pam decided she wanted to move back home. The place had been neglected for about 20 years and definitely was in need of some TLC. The Ladysmith estate has different cabins on the property by the sounds of it, and there were little bedrooms that Pam showed off in an interview. Her father's family used to sleep there once upon a time, and one of the smaller white bedrooms is where Pam has been sleeping too these days. Rumors that Pam was planning to develop or build condos in town were shut down, and the stars confirmed that for now, she's just working on restoring her home. She said, I just want a simple dock like it used to be. I'm sure I'll get a boat one day. It's been a lifelong art project. My kids have some ideas for their cabin, so it's a family adventure. My mom and dad were married here. My father grew up on the property and my parents lived with me and my brother in cabin six. So I'm happy to have not been seduced into building that big condo project. The Canadian star has posted peeks into her life on Vancouver Island thanks to Instagram. And we can see she enjoys spending time in the great outdoors with her pets. Pam has also said about her plans for her Ladysmith property, I've spent the last year here renovating, landscaping, creating gardens so that we can live sustainably. A greenhouse, potter's wheel, canning pickles and beets. I'm creating my life here now again where it all started. Residents of Vancouver Island may have even spotted Pam already since she's been keeping busy. Anderson is on billboards along the Patricia Bay Highway here since she's teamed up with a local animal rescue sanctuary to launch the billboards promoting veganism. So while we don't have many photos of Pam's current Ladysmith property, I'm sure we'll be able to see more of the place when she's done giving it a facelift and restoring her dream home. Viewers have been excited for the comedy You People that became the number one movie on Netflix seemingly overnight. Lauren London stars in the flick and it's one of the first times we're seeing her in the spotlight in such a big way after the tragic 2019 death of her longtime partner, Grammy winning rapper activist Nipsey Hussle, with whom Lauren shares a child. In 2020, the actress did invest in a new residential fresh start for her and her two sons, where they currently live. A $1.7 million contemporary Spanish style home in Sherman Oaks, Los Angeles. And as you'll learn in this video, Lauren is a native of LA for 
as long as she can remember, and her roots run pretty deep. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Everyone is excited to see Lauren London return on screen in a big way, starring alongside Jonah Hill in Netflix's You People. Lauren stars as Amira in the movie. Hill's character Ezra falls for her despite their very different backgrounds as a Jewish man and a Muslim woman. Lauren wasn't sure if she wanted to join the cast at first as she didn't know if the project aligned with what she was doing work-wise. But it seems that she made the right decision and she was the perfect fit for the role. After her longtime partner Nipsey Hussle died, Lauren reportedly wouldn't take acting roles for the sake of simply working. She just makes time for the right roles. Instead, she focuses more on her spirituality and raising her two sons, Cameron, who she shares with rapper Lil Wayne, and Cross, who is the son of her and Nipsey. Lauren also simplified her life on the residential front around the same time, moving on from a series of rental homes for a stunning property in the area of Sherman Oaks, California, where she still resides with her family. She bought this home in 2020 for $1.7 million in an off-market deal. And as you'd expect, the estate is completely walled, gated, and set up with security cameras for ample privacy. The home is a contemporary Spanish-style residence, which was built back in 1949, but fully renovated and expanded since into the two-level crib that it is today. Sherman Oaks is a neighborhood that famously provides a suburban feel but has been growing in popularity with celebrities recently. The leafy and peaceful community located in the San Fernando Valley lies between Encino and Studio City, only 30 minutes from downtown LA. A handful of celebrities call Sherman Oaks home now, including Nev Campbell, who's a close neighbor, Lil Nas X, and much more. The charming spread offers over 2,500 square feet of space, along with four bedrooms, three bathrooms, and a handful of living spaces throughout. The grassy front lawn is shaded full time by a massive redwood tree adding to the charm of the property, while well, the backyard is even more impressive. Her home boasts a covered porch and plenty of space to entertain out back, also with features like a barbecue center with bar style seating. Elsewhere, there's also a sparkling pool with inset spa and Baja shelf to sunbathe, not to mention the lawns are mostly hardscaped, making it very low maintenance. Sounds like the perfect space for summers in the San Fernando Valley. In a recent interview, Lauren opened up about her routine and what keeps her going most days. Raising her sons in this very home, she also focuses heavily on the spiritual aspect of her life. Lauren is an early riser and practices this intentionally, explaining, I try to wake up an hour before I have to wake up. I have definitely found that when I actually give myself space to wake up, I'm actually better. She then starts her day off with intention, including prayer, meditation, tea, reading, and then right into parenting. Inside Lauren's home, there are plenty of charming yet luxe spaces for her to execute her daily routine. The French style double doors open into a living room where you'll find a fireplace and the open floor plan also leads to a step down family room with yet another fireplace. Nearby spaces include an office study, as well as a large formal dining room that further connects to the kitchen. The Eden kitchen is surprisingly roomy and was completely new upon moving in, boasting luxury stainless steel appliances, a whitewashed brick backsplash, and a breakfast bar. The former owners of the home custom installed all the new bells and whistles in Lauren's stylish kitchen, as well as the neutral decor and hardwood floors found throughout the home. If you're wondering, Days of Our Lives and Devious Maids actor Matt Sedino and his wife Erica Franco are the ones who sold this charming home to her a couple of years back. Many of the walls in the home follow a similar color scheme, painted a crisp white, while some accent walls sport a dark gray or driftwood color. The house is uniquely shaped. It's long and narrow, and only the back half has an upper level. However, they knew how to maximize this space, and the floor plan continues into a cozy step-down media lounge which is tucked away under the staircase. Three of the bedrooms are located on the upper level, including Lauren's master suite, while one guest room is located downstairs at the far end of the abode. There's even a bonus room downstairs that could be used as a bedroom, a mini home gym, or a playroom. Lauren's serene master retreat offers up a private balcony to take in views of the hills, a walk-in closet with custom built-ins, and a stylish vaulted ceiling. Of course, 
Her ensuite is equally lavish, and it includes a black and white color scheme, a soaking tub, dual vanities, and relaxing dual rainfall shower. Back outside, a two-car garage rounds out her home's features. While Lauren is more selective with her acting gigs these days, she claims that she learned a lot about her roots while filming the latest hit comedy, You People, alongside Jonah Hill. She said about this in a recent interview, My dad is Jewish, my mom is black. I just grew up with my mother in my household. I didn't grow up with my dad living with us. My parents divorced when I was really young. I was three. So my experience is of my mother's experience because I just grew up with a single black mom. In this movie, Lauren plays Amira, who starts a relationship with Jonah Hill's Ezra, and the couple who come from completely different backgrounds, one being Muslim and one being Jewish, try to unite their families. Lauren talked more about finding parts of herself in the role, explaining, what felt personal was shooting in LA and some of those areas that we shot in and some of the places that we shot in. I like that they were Jewish because it was also some stuff that I got to learn via being in the movie that I didn't know. Lauren does have deep ties to Los Angeles regardless. Her mom was the first in the family fully born and raised in LA and then Lauren's upbringing was the same. Despite moving around a lot growing up, it was still in the city. The actress's memories all over Los Angeles, including living with their grandmother in Pasadena, riding through the jungle as a child to visit her aunt and more. Now Lauren still remains in LA, but this time in Sherman Oaks, where she seems to have settled in well with her two sons. She opened up about how she's choosing to raise her kids as well, saying, I'm a single mom, so I want to be very realistic with them. Life is tough. I don't want to cushion everything for them. I want them to be prepared for life. I think I'm a balance because sometimes I think I may be going too soft, but I have times where I'm like, hey, 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 y'all, come on now. Let's get this together. I think I'm an old school mother. Well, it seems that Lauren London has been doing quite well despite the tragedy that struck a few years back. And she has been choosing to focus on the good in her life, including her kids, their health, and their opportunities. Now that we've checked out Lauren's Sherman Oaks residence, as well as what she's been up to in her home life recently. Sophia Bush is a woman who goes by many labels, actress, activist, philanthropist, and lately interior designer as well. Yes, the woman who once made a name for herself on popular TV series like One Tree Hill and Chicago PD has recently partnered with Chicago-based designer Lauren McGrady to found their very own consulting firm. Don't worry, I'll get a bit more into how this career change came about as our story goes on, but first, we're gonna kick this brand new house tour off by starting with Sophia's home base, a snazzy 1,600 square foot, late 1950s contemporary house built on the side of a steep slope in the Nichols Canyon area of the Hollywood Hills, which she bought in the early 2010s for a reported $1.4 million. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. When Sophia Bush first moved into her home back then, a 90-year-old woman named Annette lived right next door to her in a cottage that she had built with her husband in the late 50s. Over the next few years, Annette and Sophia grew close over a few cocktails, and that's when Sophia came up with a plan. She explained her thought process to Us Magazine, telling them, I made a vow that someday when she was ready to sell, I would try to buy it from her, reconnect the land, and make a little urban farm out of it. She loved that idea. Shortly after Annette passed, Sophia held up her end of the bargain and she bought the property next to her own to prevent others from simply tearing it down. But to say that her idea needed a whole lot of work done to be brought to life was an understatement. Initially, Sophia thought that she'd only have to decorate and lightly renovate her new home, but the foundation turned out to be uneven and the plumbing was in major need of updating. In other words, she had her work cut out for her. So, Sophia set out about totally restoring and reconstructing both homes to turn everything into one giant property. Working in collaboration with an interior designer and contractor, Sophia began what became a year-long renovation that totally reimagined her longtime home. She explained, 
Once I knew that we were looking at a teardown, we were able to begin envisioning a new flow for the space. For the most part, they kept the original footprint of the house intact. I love the guest rooms as well as the guest bath in their original locations, but everything else she totally rearranged. A key part of this new design was an open central core that encompasses an airy living room with a gorgeous dining space. The kitchen was shifted from the opposite end of the house and was newly fitted with a dramatic 13 foot long island the color of adobe brick, while also being topped with Caesar stone and a custom sink and terrazzo tiles to cover the floor. Sophia also added on a powder room and created a master suite out of what was formerly a small bedroom in a back den. Once all of the construction and renovation work had finally been completed, next, she called on the folks over at One King's Lane Interior Design to help her decorate. Looking to stay true to certain mid-century aspects of her home's original style, Sophia worked with interior designer Alexander Reed to transform her new sunlit post and beam home into the perfect spot for visiting family and friends. While speaking with the One King's Lane website, she said, I wanted this space to have that mid-mod vibe, but also to feel contemporary, romantic, and a little eclectic. This was a look and feel that Sophia managed to bring to life by layering comfy pieces and welcoming textures with modern finishes and a few understated patterns. For instance, over in the living area, a cozy hand-knotted rug inspired by Moroccan patterns anchors a marble top cocktail table, as well as a vintage chair, sofa, and a pair of hardwood armchairs. Sophia also put together an unexpectedly unique sitting area in a corner of this living space by pairing an antique bench with linen upholstery and a round bronze mirror. The dining area has become the center of Sophia's family gatherings on the weekends, especially now that the laid back combo of chrome chairs and a rustic farmhouse table instantly puts everyone in her social circle at ease. About four years later, Sophia would update the look of her home yet again, this time giving the overall aesthetic a much warmer feel, especially in the living room. Here, the previously monochrome tones took on a brighter color palette with Italian leather and a rug. And when it came time to redecorate her bedroom, Sophia chose a mid-century walnut look with a specially designed modern closet system. If you think that look is something, just wait until you see her bathroom with this unique circular tub. Last but not least, Sophia turned one of her former guest rooms into an office that features an executive desk, a vintage desk chair, and cork walls. Here you can also find all of Sophia's books, scripts, supplies, and of course, a healthy dose of memorabilia from her many hit films and shows. But as much of a hand as she had in redesigning this home from top to bottom, it wasn't the experience here that inspired Sophia to enter the world of interior design for herself. Instead, she found herself considering a career change after rolling up her sleeves and getting to work redesigning another one of her homes, this one over in Chicago. In 2015, Sophia Bush paid right around $1.6 million for a penthouse apartment in Chicago, Illinois probably so she could shack up there while filming episodes of her popular TV series, Chicago PD. Spanning the entire 3,500 square foot top floor of a former historic warehouse building, Sophia's Chicago home utilized a secure key lock elevator that opened directly into the sprawling house-sized unit that comes complete with three bedrooms as well as two and a half baths. Boasting a variety of classic loft-like details, including exposed brick walls, wide plank wood floors, and 12-foot timber ceilings woven into a maze of ductwork, this place makes an impression on anyone who steps foot inside. Over in the skylit living area, a huge TV sits on top of a minimalist fireplace that's only steps away from the dining room table. Not far from there is an expertly crafted open plan kitchen that acts as the central hub of the loft with milk white marble counters as well as denim blue cabinets. Two of the three bedrooms are decent sized guest rooms located discreetly behind the kitchen with a shared Jack and Jill style bathroom sandwich in between. Then there's the massive primary suite that stretches almost 28 feet long with a sitting area all its own plus two walk-in closets and an accompanying marble accented bath. As for some of the home's more eccentric features, there's a powder room with a secret shower hidden behind a wallpapered panel, as well as a vibrant geometric staircase 
that climbs up to a private rooftop deck with wraparound skyline views of the city. During the course of living here over five years, Sophia enlisted the help of Chicago-based designer Lauren McGrady to renovate her penthouse apartment. The two ended up getting along so famously that it inspired Sophia to partner with Lauren to officially found their own design consulting firm. After selling her former Chicago home for just under $2 million in 2020, Sophia returned to the West Coast and her new firm's first gig was revamping her Hollywood Hills home to give it its updated look. In many ways, Sophia's career as an interior designer is still just getting started, but she's using her own house as proof of concept for her new business and she is hopeful that it will lead to promising possibilities. At the end of October 2022, it was reported that Giselle Bunchen had purchased a modest and chic cottage in a small oceanside town near Miami Beach for about $1.3 million. However, it said that Giselle actually bought it about nine months ago. More specifically, a few weeks before her ex-husband Tom Brady decided to make his NFL comeback with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. While the former couple only recently finalized their divorce, they've had very public marriage issues for about a year, and it was said that Giselle had been living separate from Tom for a handful of months. Now, it seems that the humble cottage property the supermodel was living in will be kept as perhaps a guest house, office, or bonus abode, because now she's paid over $11 million for a nearby mansion. Giselle's new estate is just across the waterway from her ex Tom's unfinished $27 million Miami Mega Mansion, and her new house offers about 6,000 square feet of space, an open plan layout, and sits right on the water. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. We'll kick things off by looking at Giselle Bunchen's more humble abode in Florida, which she reportedly bought back in the early months of 2022. While it was only revealed recently, it said that the supermodel wasn't actually living with Tom for quite a while. And she was likely living in this home with the kids as well as splitting their time at the New York City apartment. It said that Giselle quietly bought this property for $1.3 million about two weeks prior to her ex-husband Tom deciding to make an NFL comeback with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers after formerly retiring. Her cottage style home is located in a small waterside town near Miami Beach called Surfside that sits right on the Atlantic Ocean and it's a charming, mainly residential beach community. Giselle's property is described as an art deco style cottage and it was built back in 1940, but completely renovated and modernized since then. Outside the house consists of stucco and a terracotta roof while there's an abundance of fresh white walls throughout the interior spaces. It said that Giselle was also giving the home her own makeover recently and we have yet to see what she's done with the 1,540 square feet of living space inside. The modestly sized home offers up three bedrooms and three bathrooms as well as a handful of light filled spaces with hardwood flooring underfoot. There is a brick driveway, petite lawn and steps leading to the front door while inside the foyer steps down into a great room, which maximizes the space with an open plan style. This great room is spacious, combining a living room, dining room, and kitchen. The living room boasts a faux brick fireplace painted the same shade of white as the walls, while the dining area and kitchen are contemporary in style. The cooking space is almost all white, but offers high-end stainless steel appliances, as well as an oversized marble island with snack bar style seating. There are also glass sliders here, which lead out to an outdoor dining patio and backyard. You can also see that our humble home has a stylish master suite with beamed white ceilings and an impressive attached bath, featuring double vanities and a glass enclosed shower stall. However, there really isn't much more to this place than that which may come as a shock considering Giselle's impressive net worth and the usual size of her luxury mansions. Something tells me that this property will soon serve as a guest or staff quarters, and even more so now since it's been revealed that she upgraded to a nearby mega mansion that definitely seems more her style. Just this November 2022, Giselle's new Florida home was revealed, and it's in the same Surfside neighborhood as the cottage we just checked out. 
Furthermore, her new mansion is a short boat ride from her ex-husband Tom Brady's unfinished Miami Beach mega mansion. As we can see, it's just across the waterway from the Indian Creek Country Club community known as Billionaire Bunker, where his unfinished property is located. This home is more Giselle's size and costs $11.5 million, while reports show she has no mortgage on the property. She snagged it at that discounted price merely days before her divorce from Brady was finalized in early October. So we can assume the Miami area cottage is just gonna be a mini office space, guest quarters, or bonus property. But she certainly can afford it. Built in 1981 and updated since, Giselle's mansion is said to feature 6,600 square feet of space, while some other sources claim it's not quite as big. Either way, from photos, we can tell it's certainly mansion-sized and also boasts five bedrooms and seven bathrooms throughout. Walking up to the front of the home, there's a large brick paved motor court along with nearly half an acre of property, all of which is on a private cul-de-sac. Her estate was designed by Miami architect Barry Sugarman and is described as quote unquote architecturally unique, boasting a stone accented exterior and two levels of living space inside. Of course, the place is stacked with all of the amenities needed for a celebrity, including a theater, playrooms for the kids, and more. Walking in Giselle's new home, you'll be welcomed into the open plan living spaces, including more than one family room, dining room, as well as a kitchen, all of which offer high ceilings. One of the living rooms boasts a large stone fireplace on one wall, whereas the kitchen has some simple wooden cabinets and tiled flooring underfoot. In fact, considering the kitchen looks slightly less modern than some of the other rooms in the mansion, I have a feeling that Giselle will be giving it a makeover soon. However, it does provide two islands, fairly new stainless steel appliances, as well as easy access to the outdoor spaces via glass sliders. Large windows and terraces throughout offer amazing views of the waterway and Indian Creek Island too. Also on the main floor sits Giselle's new master suite, which appears to be one of the more glamorous spaces in the mansion, offering polished marble flooring underfoot, as well as a corner location with two walls of windows and glass doors, leading you right out to the water's edge and the swimming pool. Her master retreat also boasts a chandelier and dual ensuite baths, one with two vanities. Other features in her home include a glass-lined office, home gym, movie theater, and playroom for her kids. Moving outside, the supermodel's new estate has a free-form pool and surrounding terrace to lounge or entertain, as well as two-car garage and 92 feet of water frontage with a dock. While Giselle is moving into that Florida mansion, it's also said that during her separation from Brady, she was spending plenty of time living in their New York City apartment as well. Last year in 2021, news broke that the ex-couple actually sold one of their Manhattan apartments for a whopping $36.8 million, located in the upscale Tribeca neighborhood. Of course, having sold this place, we know it couldn't be the one Giselle was living in during their split. But property records show that they maintained another smaller unit in the same building, but there isn't too much information on that one. Either way, the one which Giselle and Tom sold for that insane price tag was a condo featuring five bedrooms and features like a 1900 square foot terrace. The Robert A.M. Stern designed buildings is beloved by celebrities because among the amazing amenities, there's also a private drive-in entry and it's marketed as quote unquote paparazzi proof. The apartment that the former couple sold was located on the 12th floor of the building, while the smaller one which Giselle kept is just below on the 11th floor. The apartment that was sold offered views of the Hudson River as well as a total of 4,647 square feet of living space. The corner living room had 31 foot high ceilings with wrap around walls of glass showing off the amazing views, as well as bonuses like a fireplace and detached formal dining room. The eating kitchen boasted marble counters, designer appliances, and a wine fridge also opening up to the family room. Giselle and Tom paid over $25 million for the unit in 2018, but still made a nice profit on the sale of it since then. There was also a massive master suite with two walk-in closets and ensuite bath, while 
all other guest or family rooms had their own bathrooms too. Other bonuses included a private elevator landing, entry foyer, separate service entrance, and library, which could even be used as another bedroom if needed. Double doors located in the family room lead out to the sprawling private terrace, which also had a built-in grilling station and sink. While Giselle's apartment on the 11th floor might not be as large as this one, she still has access to the same upskill amenities that the building offers. Aside from that paparazzi-proof entrance, residents have access to everything from an 82-foot swimming pool, fitness center, yoga and Pilates studios, a library, and a full-sized squash court. There's also a private courtyard, a games room, and the wellness level where the swimming pool is further has a hot and cold plunge pools, a sauna, and a steam room. This doesn't include all of the other services like top-notch concierge and much more. Well, I think we can see that Giselle Bunchen is doing just fine since her split from Tom Brady, but that can be expected from her success. We'll just have to wait and see if she adds anything else to her property portfolio or fixes up her new Florida mansion at all. These days though, it does appear Lindsay is having a bit of a career revival, which makes us fans very excited to see. And one of these recent projects is her new Christmas movie on Netflix. But more on that in just a moment. Lohan's career basically hit rock bottom circa 2011, right around the same time that she decided to lease a fully renovated 1937 Georgian colonial inspired home for what many people initially assumed was a price tag of nearly $25,000 a month. But after a little bit of digging, it seems Lindsay wasn't paying anywhere near that amount. And really, how could she have been with the state that her career was in? Instead, it was determined Lindsay was renting the unit for the price of $9,000 a month. I mean, still not a discount, but a lot cheaper than 25K. Located on a 1.5 acre spread that's all but hidden from the nearby road, thanks in large part to a long driveway set behind massive iron gates, Lindsay's former Beverly Hills estate featured a relatively small motor court with a two car garage. Out front, the house opened to a brick terrace that wraps all the way around the home and extends as far back as the swimming pool. Inside, the property boasts three bedrooms as well as three and a half bathrooms in just under 2,500 square feet of space, including multiple gathering spaces like the living and dining rooms, both of which feature polished wooden floors and numerous French doors leading out to the expansive deck beyond. Now, prior to Lindsay moving in, the owners of the home had thoroughly upgraded the kitchen by installing a center island and brand new marble countertops throughout. Meanwhile, upstairs, the second floor master suite boasted a private balcony, a fireplace to warm yourself up at night, and an attached bathroom with two sinks, a glassed-in shower, separate jacuzzi tub, and a bidet. Out in the backyard sat that mammoth deck built into the hillside to take advantage of those incredible incredible city views, as well as a nearby walled courtyard that boasted a built-in barbecue for the many get-togethers Lindsay no doubt threw while living here. Shortly after moving in, Lindsay began one of her many attempts of image rehabilitation. She not only signed on to guest spots on popular TV series like Glee and Saturday Night Live, she also invited Bravo's million dollar decorators inside of her home to redesign a few specific rooms. So Bravo footed the bill to refashion the actress's rental, even though she barely bothered showing up on the actual episode all that much herself. Following that cosmetic update, Lindsay couldn't keep up with her rent and tried to break her lease in December 2012. She was warned that if she did so, she'd incur massive penalties, so she kept scraping together the money for a few months before her lease finally ran out. After a short layover in New York, Lindsay wound up taking her act international, and in the late 2010s, she would do her best to rehabilitate her brand once again, this time by opening up her very own beach club. In case you're not aware, a couple of years ago, Lindsay Lohan was on a mission to create her own empire and become something of a mogul in the European country of Greece. 
Not only did she become an owner of a nightclub in Athens, she also became the proprietor of a beach club on the Greek island of Mykonos. Lindsay opened the club in 2019 and a few months later she began shooting her MTV series aptly titled Lindsay Lohan's Beach Club to show off its sizzling locale. And while Lindsay never actually resided on this property, she sure made the most of every visit, partying it up like it was 2007 all over again. Lindsay also invested a healthy amount of capital in the property, redesigning the look of each room and the club's exterior while flying in staff from America for the entire summer to serve as ambassadors of the Lohan brand. When the club wasn't roped off for the filming of her reality series, Lohan opened the spot up to guests from all over the world who could take advantage of amenities like renting a sunbed for $50 a session. Or you could dine in the club's restaurant that serves up Mediterranean food with unexpected flavor combinations, including a slew of menu items that ranged in price from $25 to $75. After indulging in a few sharing plates and drinks, visitors could also swing by her boutique shop stocked with some of Lindsay's favorite items, all of which boasted a Londonish flair. Unfortunately, like so much else in Lindsay's life, this too was not meant to last. The MTV series more or less bombed upon release and Lindsay left others in charge of the resort as she departed from Greece altogether. So where did she retreat to once her new series sunk? Well, it wasn't a return to America, not yet at least. Instead, she jumped on a plane and headed to Dubai. Lindsay Lohan has spent the better part of five years operating out of the United Arab Emirates, more specifically, the city of Dubai, where she lives alongside her new husband, Badr Shamas. She met him in 2018 and married him earlier this year. During an interview with W Magazine, Lindsay shared that her decision to move to Dubai stemmed from a desire to keep her private life away from the prying eye of the media. She explained, There's a certain calmness that I find here. There's no paparazzi, no cameras. That's a big deal for me. More than anything else, Lindsay felt liberated by her ability to simply go anywhere in Dubai and live her life without having to worry over who was following her around. Even more surprisingly, this move far away from home wound up having a rejuvenating effect on on her relationship with her family, even her father whom she'd had some well publicized issues with in the past. Another added bonus was that the serenity Lohan discovered in Dubai allowed her to be more productive. She described how to Emirates women. I get more done because I don't have the scrutiny and fixation on what I'm doing every second. I work all the time, my mind never stops. Some of that work has been on herself as well and in recent years, Lohan has broadened her horizons by turning inward to learn more about spirituality, specifically speaking, the Quran. And while she hasn't converted to the Islamic faith fully, she does consider it to be beautiful. After a few full years of living in Dubai, Lindsay was reportedly getting set to head back to the United States in early 2020 to help manage her sister Ali's music career. But once the pandemic hit, those best laid plans fell by the wayside and later that year, Ali would join Lindsay in Dubai during lockdown. Of course, now that she just got married, Lindsay's plans to return stateside might have been pushed back but she's still doing some work in the States, that's for sure. And that isn't to say those of us over here in North America are gonna have to be without Lindsay Lohan over this holiday season particularly, because she just popped up in a brand new Netflix holiday movie. Before we wrap things up here, I thought that it might be fun to take a look at the fabulous locale that serves as the main setting for Lindsay Lohan's new holiday rom-com, Falling for Christmas. I mean, the film might be your typical cheesy holiday movie, but who doesn't love those? And it's partly set in an incredible ski resort that makes it feel luxurious. And guess what? This dreamy resort actually exists in Park City, Utah. One of the main locations used in the film is a resort known as the Goldener Hirsch, which is part of the Auberge Resorts collection and features a blend of Bavarian inspired inns, as well as some sleek modern structures. This combo of an old world feel with modern touches makes this resort one of a kind and would no doubt take your breath away whether you were walking through its numerous glass skyways or relaxing in front of any of the property's gorgeous wood burning fireplaces. Plus, as an added bonus, you can partake in a handful of winter activities including skiing, snowmobile tours, bobsledding and sleigh rides as well as other five star luxuries like an incredible 
incredible restaurant, multiple lounges, a pool, fitness center, and a dry sauna. So if you're looking to get away this holiday season, you can either book yourself a flight to Utah or simply turn on Netflix and see Lindsay's Christmas comeback. Actress Jean Smart has had herself one long career. After becoming best known for her portrayal of Charlene Frazier on the CBS sitcom Designing Women in the late 80s, she has since launched her career into overdrive with a critically acclaimed performance of fictional stand-up comedy legend Deborah Vance on the hit HBO series Hack. Jean has not only earned herself a Screen Actors Guild Award, one Golden Globe, and two Emmys, she's also decided to change up her residential circumstances with the purchase of a brand new home. But before we get into where Jean Smart is living today, let's take a look at a few homes from her past. Since the early 90s, Jean shared her home life with her longtime husband and fellow actor, Richard Gilliland. These two first met on the set of Designing Women, where Richard had a recurring role playing the boyfriend of Annie Potts character which meant that Jean met her future husband while he was busy kissing someone else. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Over the next few years, Richard would go on to appear in other TV series such as Party of Five, Matlock, and 24. But for the most part, he was never able to get his own acting career off the ground because he was too busy supporting Jean with hers as they built a family and life together. The first home they shared was a relatively small 2,800 square foot house in the Los Angeles neighborhood of Brentwood. Originally built in the 1950s, this three bedroom property also featured a grassy yard as well as a pool. But these two lived there so long ago, now that unfortunately we don't have any photo evidence of it. But we do have a few more details when it comes to their second home. In 2002, the happy couple purchased a residence in Encino, California for $1.5 million that was hidden down a long gated driveway on a three-quarter acre plot of land anchored by a four-bedroom, three-and-a-half bath New England farmhouse. First constructed in the 1920s, the home had been recently restored at the time Jean and Richard moved in while boasting over 3,500 square feet of space. These two would then spend the next couple decades living in this home and taking advantage of the property's sunroom with a brick floor, as well as its basements, which is said to have featured hardwood flooring, some of which was lovingly hand stenciled. Other amenities were said to include a massive outdoor pool, a detached three car garage, extensive gardens, as well as a one bedroom, one bathroom guest house that was attached just off the side of the main house. It was from this happy home that Jean would undertake the latter half of her career, which would eventually lead her down the path to hacks. Before I introduce you to Jean Smart's newest home, I want to take you inside the estate that serves as her side mansion in the second season of her popular HBO series. Hacks came out of the gate swinging in its first season, racking up a slew of awards, including taking home the Golden Globe for Best TV Series in the category of Musical and Comedy. In the show's sophomore season, Jean's character of Deborah Vance travels across the United States on a comedy tour. But out of all the places, she winds up visiting, one of the most memorable locations is a grand estate that Deborah sets up shop in with her entourage. While this incredible property is made to be overlooking the downtown LA skyline, in actual reality the mansion can be found in the foothills of the San Gabriel Valley. Here it's located in a picturesque neighborhood featuring wide tree-lined streets and one gorgeous home after the next. The once extensive grounds of this eye-catching home were originally captured in the 1921 silent film Seven Years of Bad Luck, where the film's stars were featured frolicking through the property's gardens in a dream sequence. Following that, the property would go on to be utilized in a number of other productions. In fact, you could say that this location has a long and storied cinematic history. Back in 1982, it was used as the site of a haunted house in an iconic episode of the popular TV series Knott's Landing. And over the next three decades, you could catch the estate popping up as the home base of a crime lord in series like The Finder, or as a supposed Buenos Aires villa in season 9 of Bone. More recently, it's made appearances in episodes of Bad Teacher, Runaways, and the Ryan Murphy-produced Netflix series Ratched. 
Set behind a Spanish colonial revival facade and gorgeous terracotta details, this residence is the very definition of a trophy property, thanks to its more than 7,000 square feet with five bedrooms and six bathrooms. Outside of the fact that this property was built in 1915, there's very little details available about the home's history online. And since it last sold in October of 2000 for $1.5 million, images of its interior are basically non-existent. But that's where the fine folks at Hacks come in, because episode seven of that series essentially acts as a fabulous virtual tour. For instance, just beyond the front door is what many consider to be the crown jewel of the property, a two-story formal entry featuring a barrel vaulted ceiling, arched openings, a fountain, a grand staircase, checked floors, and a second level mezzanine. The common area includes not only a library, but a formal dining room, as well as a sprawling sized living room, a rich wood paneled space with a fireplace. Then there's the chef's kitchen that comes complete with butcher block countertops, a nine burner flat top range, an oversized fridge, a center island, as well as both a pastry and butler's pantry. Additional luxurious extras are said to include a one of a kind sunroom, as well as dual powder rooms, a wine cellar, an elevator, and a dumbwaiter. As for the outside, the home's gorgeous structure rises up over a brick patio, as well as a terraced garden and a large pool with an accompanying spa. Today, the home surrounding grounds measure in at just over half an acre, but it used to be a whole lot larger. In the 1950s, a majority of the acreage was sold off to make way for new homes. As fantastic a boon as Hacks has been for Jean Smart's career, the first season of the series became almost bittersweet. I say that because only about a week before filming wrapped on the initial run, Jean suddenly and tragically lost her husband Richard when he succumbed to a short illness. Following his passing, Jean would look for a fresh start by moving out of the longtime home she shared with Richard, picking herself up something new. Recently discovered tax records show that Jean Smart coughed up right around $5.25 million to purchase a home in Toluca Lake, California with a whole bunch of Hollywood pedigree. Originally constructed in 1924 and once owned by veteran TV writer and producer Donald Todd of This Is Us and Ugly Betty fame, the property was then purchased in 2004 for almost $2.5 million by comedian George Lopez alongside his then wife Anne. When George and Anne got divorced in 2011, the property was transferred to her name and she eventually became the one who sold it to Jean in an off-market deal at the end of 2022. Since the estate wasn't listed on the open market at the time of sale, details are limited. But it has been described in former marketing materials as a magnificent Spanish estate with sprawling grounds and pool. Today, the property is secured behind locked gates and obscured from view behind a forest of trees and greenery. As for the size of its interior, online resources suggest that it spans more than 5,300 square feet, making it almost double the size of Jean's original home. Over the years of its existence, any number of restorations and alterations have no doubt been made, but marketing materials from 20 years ago say that the estate boasts a two-story foyer with a grand staircase, as well as a living room with beamed ceilings, a dining room with a fireplace, and a master suite with two walk-in closets. Other highlights are said to include a library, solarium, and gated parking. Until Jean Smart starts showing off pictures of the inside of her new digs, we'll just have to wait and see how luxe it really is. Hey, welcome to my house in Nashville. Come on in, I'll give you a little tour. Actress Melissa Joan Hart rose to fame off the back of her 90s Nickelodeon sitcom Clarissa Explains It All. Afterwards, she became even more well known for her portrayal of Sabrina the Teenage Witch on the television series of the same name that produced 163 episodes in total. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. I mean, even me, I was a major fan of that one. And while Melissa is best known for these iconic 90s characters, her most important role these days is as a mother to her three sons and a partner to her husband Mark Wilkerson, the lead singer and guitarist of the rock band Course of Nature. For a number of years, this happy family has split their time between two main addresses, one in Connecticut and another in California. For the most part, Melissa has been pretty quiet about her home that's located out east. 
but what I can tell you about it is that it's extremely traditional. When discussing this home in the past, Melissa has played coy in terms of its exact location, but has revealed that it's situated in a town that has a lot of farmland and open space. She also once explained to Architectural Digest that the majority of the home was painted white by her friend Lonnie Paul, who designed the interior of the home. In fact, Melissa was so pleased with the job, she then hired Lonnie to decorate the interior of her Los Angeles home, located in the neighborhood of Studio City and situated right across the street from where she's occasionally worked in the past at CBS Studios. Unlike her home out east, there's a lot more to discover about Melissa's longtime property in LA. With her friend's help, Melissa transformed the inside of this modern cottage with colors of light blue, white, and gray. In fact, Lonnie once described their inspiration for the interior to pop sugar like this. It was supposed to be a cool little California bungalow. The place has a little history being across from the studio and having had different stars live in it. We made it more modern and fresh and bright. In other words, the design choices resulted in big, clean open spaces, like downstairs in the kitchen with countertops made out of white marble, tile backsplash, custom design cabinets, and a lovely little table with bench style seating. Meanwhile, over in the nearby living room are a series of modern looking great chairs that flank a stunning central fireplace. There are also custom designed drapes that hide a series of sliding doors which open to the lush backyard. There's even a gigantic portrait of Melissa composed entirely out of Legos hanging in a spot of honor in the middle of the room. But moving on upstairs is where the home's bedrooms are all located and Melissa opted to go with a playful sense of color to unite her son's two rooms with the bathroom that sits between them. The green bedroom was decorated for Melissa's oldest son while her two youngest share the blue bedroom on the opposite side. As for the master suite, it's centered around yet another stunning full height fireplace and boasts a palette of sophisticated neutral tones. And look Located just two steps across from the hall, from there is a master bath with a massive glass shower outfitted with multiple shower heads. Circling back to Melissa's exterior, it might be small outside, but it's been decorated with a charming set of bistro chairs and a table from Pier 1. I mean, it's not a gigantic home by any means, but it's still pretty nice, isn't it? The problem is that when you split your time between multiple properties, you're far more inclined to get tired of living in just one of them. And eventually, that's what happened to Melissa and her family. So in 2019, they decided to pack up and move from LA to Lake Tahoe. Before deciding to turn her Lake Tahoe, California, house into a permanent residence, the property originally acted as the family's vacation house for a number of years. When asked what it was about this area that attracted Melissa and her family to live here full time, she explained to Architectural Digest, we're not beach people, we're definitely mountain people. We love being in the fresh air with the stars. And I can tell you this, she sure wasn't kidding about those views, they're spectacular. Melissa and Mark originally bought this property back in 2006 and have slowly been developing it ever since. Since. First, they started with the kitchen before moving on to the rest of the house, painting and putting up wood paneling everywhere they went. In fact, Melissa's Tahoe home is more or less the opposite of her LA home in that there's apparently wood everywhere. Wood railings, wood staircases, and a whole bunch more that surrounds the property's central stone fireplace. Melissa's described this home as more like a chalet or a Scandinavian style abode that's been built on the side of a mountain. The upstairs is said to boast massive 30 foot ceilings and there are 25 foot decks positioned all around the exterior of the property. Other interior design choices of interest include an antler chandelier, sconces, and a whole bunch of bear themed decor that Melissa says she wouldn't dare place in a more traditional home. And I can see why. But unfortunately, she just never shared much of this space with her fans. What's more is Melissa's little experiment to live full time in Lake Tahoe didn't last all that long. Less than two years later, she and her family realized that the fit just wasn't working and decided to buy a brand new home in Nashville, Tennessee. As the world settled into lockdown throughout the course of 2020, Melissa and her family decided they needed to get away from the hustle and the bustle of California. So they relocated to Nashville, where they moved into a home that was very much unlike any of their former properties. 
Let's kick things off with the home's courtyard. Set behind an intricately designed iron gate, this cute little section of Melissa's home even includes an eye-catching fountain in the middle of it. Melissa and Mark originally fell in love with the property thanks to its unique mix of details, like its church lights and doors contrasted against more modern light fixtures. But if we're talking about unique, then what we really need to start with is Melissa's one-of-a-kind living room. The bones of this massive open space have been constructed out of pillars from India and a roof barn that was imported from the state of Alabama. Not to mention a multi-layered chandelier that as big as it is, and it's big, looks relatively tiny in regards to the grandeur of the whole room itself. A short walk from the living room takes you to the kitchen table where the family enjoys the majority of their meals around a circular table with another low hanging light wrapped in a piece of dripped wood. When you're finally ready to transition from the main floor to the top, you'll have to go through the home's mammoth central staircase. Designed by a man named Brandon White, the wood that composes the majority of the staircase has been painted in alternating shades of white and gray, as well as boasts rustic detailing that incorporates both rug and tile all in one. Elsewhere, Melissa's home office space is where she likes to keep the bulk of her film and TV memorabilia, including movie posters and a Sabrina the Teenage Witch ad that used to drive around the city streets on the side of a bus, but now it hangs just above Melissa's window. After moving in, one of the couple's most important quarantine projects was to create a room for their kids that would make them the envy of their friends, something that Melissa and Mark managed to pull off by going to Home Depot, grabbing a bunch of wood and constructing a treehouse like loft with LED lights and glow in the dark stars for their son Tucker. Also located on the second floor just above the living room is what Melissa has taken to calling her library, a stretch of walls so big that it doesn't just contain all of the family's books, it also holds a whole bunch of mementos celebrating their fondest memories. Meanwhile, back down on the main floor, just past the spot that Melissa likes to refer to as her Picasso gallery, where she's hung some of her favorite works from one of the world's most famous artists, is her master bedroom. Not only does this space contain an elegant king-size bed, along with some epic French doors that lead out towards the backyard, it's also where Melissa keeps her treasure chest, a cubby which contains some of her most prized jewelry and her most heartfelt childhood memories, including her grandmother's music box. And just around the corner from there is Melissa's walk-in closet that she keeps as neat as possible. As enticing as Melissa's entire home appears to be, the one room with the most energy is her downstairs powder room that she likes to refer to as her pink bathroom, something that comes across like a mixture of country and punk. According to Melissa, her family inherited the bathroom looking that way and decided not to mess with the vibe. But when it came time to construct a room that was wholly her own, Melissa called dibs on the dining room. What makes this place so special to Melissa is that as someone who lives with four boys, this is the one space in the house where she gets to be her most girly self. That being said, as much as she likes the dining room, Melissa doesn't care to spend all that much time in the kitchen, and she lets Mark take care of most of the cooking. Melissa doesn't mind being on cleanup duty though, and for that they installed a golden sink and made sure there was a lot of countertop space to work with. Last but not least, we've arrived at Melissa's backyard, a space where Melissa and her family spend a lot of their free time. Believe it or not, but this is actually the first time that Melissa's kids have ever lived in a house with a pool. Now that we've seen Melissa's brand new Nashville home, I think the question becomes, how long will she and her family actually live here? Based upon their multiple properties and how often they move from one to the next, it's hard to say. One thing's for sure, the couple does have some stunning options. When you think of Aubrey Plaza, odds are you can't help but picture her as the quirky, larger-than-life character April Ludgate from the hit sitcom Parks and Recreation. And if that isn't the first time you really remember her, then maybe it was more recently on the second season of HBO's The White Lotus. With a personality as out there as Aubrey's, you'd probably expect her to be living in some eccentric home that's as in your face as she can sometimes be. But the truth of the matter is Aubrey's home is not nearly that loud. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you wanna see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone.
After getting her start as an actress in the late 2000s, Aubrey would pay right around $1.6 million for a home located in the Hollywood Hills, one that she would come to share a few years later with her eventual husband, Jeff Abina. Now, keeping with her on-screen persona versus her actual personality, Aubrey almost never updates her fans about her home life or her relationship, probably because she doesn't see it as being all that different from anyone else's. While speaking about her partner in 2013, she once told Cosmopolitan, he's a creative person and we understand each other on that level. When we're together, we like hanging out at home. We're happy having people over and playing Settlers of Catan or Battlestar Galactica. And from what we did manage to dig up about Aubrey's former Hollywood Hills address, it certainly doesn't sound like she's lying. While speaking with the UK newspaper, The Guardian, the media outlet made special note of a deluxe edition of Scrabble just sitting on her kitchen table the entire time. In fact, according to a recent interview with GQ, these two even met over a game of balderdash. So one thing's for sure, Aubrey and her hubby absolutely love their board games. While this Hollywood couple may go above and beyond to keep their private life exactly that, the one thing Aubrey regularly posts updates about are her dogs, and I can't blame her. They're both adorable pooches. Beyond just her affection for these four-legged critters, Aubrey also has an eye for collecting. Just probably not what you'd expect, because if this image is anything to go by, Aubrey isn't out there collecting shoes or Louis Vuitton bags. Instead, she's a big-time DVD and Blu-ray collector. When you put that together, with her obvious love for board games, it all kind of makes sense, right? I mean, Aubrey even relishes dressing up for Halloween, which we can see from this image, also gives us a taste of her surprisingly narrow bare bones kitchen with all white cabinets and a couple small sections of marble countertop. But the most exciting thing to ever happen in the confines of this home went down during the lockdown when Aubrey and Jeff decided to marry one another on a whim. And I'm talking within the span of a single hour. Here's how she explained it to Ellen. OneHourMarriage.com. That's real. Look it up. As it turns out, OneHourMarriage.com is apparently a thing that exists. Aubrey also managed to smooth talk the efficient into driving two hours out of his way to perform the ceremony in the couple's own backyard on the anniversary of their first date. Following which, Plaza said that she went across the street to see her neighbor, someone that she claims is a real life witch, just to get her blessing. I created a very quick love altar in my yard. Facts of our love, smoke, fire, things of that nature. Despite hosting a landmark life event right in her very own home, a little over a year later, Aubrey and Jeff would decide to buy a new house together, which left Plaza to list this abode for $2.25 million in August 2022. She'd find a buyer within just weeks and shortly thereafter move into a brand new residence. When Aubrey and Jeff sold their old home, they didn't have all that far to move. Instead, they upgraded to a pristine and elegant Spanish-style mansion located just down the street. That's right, in October 2022, Aubrey and Jeff dropped $4.7 million on a different home, but in the very same residential neighborhood of Hollywood Hills. Both her former residence and this new one were originally constructed way back in the 1920s, but Aubrey's newest digs are much bigger and fancier than what she had before. Situated behind large walls and gates on a quarter acre block of land, this three-story home is only a few minutes from Griffith Park. Exteriors offer stucco and a terracotta roof, and it sits on a front yard surrounded by mature trees. Inside, you'll find four bedrooms and six bathrooms spread across a little more than 4,000 square feet of fully restored and glamorous living space home is full of grand scale rooms, oak floors, high ceilings, arched doorways, wood sash windows, and seamless transitions between indoor outdoor spaces. When you enter the home, a portico topped front door opens to a tiled foyer, which almost immediately steps down into a living room, sporting a whitewashed wood beam ceiling, a brick fireplace, and picture windows that let in a ton of LA sun. Then there's the nearby formal dining room with French doors spilling out to the exterior garden, a space will circle back 
back to in just a moment. There's also the gourmet kitchen that's been done up with all white cabinets, marble countertops, an apron style sink, stainless steel appliances, dual walk-in pantries, a snack bar island, and most importantly, access to the outdoor dining patio overlooking the property's koi pond. Rounding out the main floor is a cozy den, which will no doubt become the go-to spot to play all those board games that these two enjoy so much, as well as an office that boasts wood beam ceilings and bookshelves. To get upstairs, you can check out the Magnesite staircase that still has all of its original ironwork from the 20s. On the top floor, there's a spacious master suite with a pair of walk-in closets, as well as a bathroom that includes a claw foot soaking tub and separate shower. Three further ensuite bedrooms can also be found up here on the top floor, one of which could easily be transformed into a media room, and another that comes equipped with a sunroom as well as a porch. As for the lowest level, it connects to an attached two-car garage, and there's even a climate-controlled wine room as well, alongside plenty of storage space. Last but not least is Aubrey's new backyard, a space that's not only big enough to host a massive in-ground pool, but also have enough room left over for a giant cabana that's steam shower ready. Having lived in her former house for roughly four years, how long will Aubrey and Jeff call this new place home? Who knows for sure, but considering how much nicer it is here, maybe this will be the spot where these two finally start a family of their own. Something that was apparently put on hold after the madness of the past couple years had Aubrey concerned about the few Future of humanity. Of course, considering these two literally just moved in a few weeks ago, maybe I should give them a little time to get settled before I plan out their next 20 or so years. Especially considering that Aubrey's only more or less just returned from spending five months holed up at the Four Seasons San Domenico Palace while shooting season two of The White Lotus. And stay tuned if you want to see more of that spot. And if you want to see more of that spot though, stay tuned because we will be having a video video on that place itself. In the meantime, I sure hope that Aubrey's new home is everything that she wants it to be. At the end of 2020, Priscilla Presley sold off her Beverly Hills mansion where she lived for decades for $13 million. The actress, businesswoman, and former wife of the late Elvis Presley then relocated to her current abode, a stylish penthouse in a multi-million dollar condo complex in Century City, Los Angeles. Way back when Priscilla first met Elvis, he already owned Graceland, the famous Tennessee property he bought in 1957. During their six-year marriage, the couple did buy some homes in California too, including an estate in the upscale neighborhood of Homeby Hills. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. At the end of 2020, Priscilla Presley made some changes to her living situation, selling her longtime Beverly Hills abode, which we'll check out in just a moment, and downsizing to a stunning penthouse in the Century City neighborhood of Los Angeles. Priscilla paid $4.8 million for her stylish and femininely decorated new home, and it looks like it's almost European in style or simply like you're stepping into a romantic Paris flat. The penthouse, which spans just over 3,200 square feet of space, was built in 1979, but had a full-scale interior renovation done in recent years by KMN Nelson Design. The European contemporary penthouse, as it was described in the listing, is located in Le Parc, which is a gated complex of multi-million dollar condos. While the former wife of Elvis Presley has lived in some stunning homes over her lifetime, this one is no different, and it looks like the ideal space for a woman with class like Priscilla. The romantic and girly design throughout the condo includes pale pink walls, pink velvet couches, and other colors like blues, lilacs, and pretty wallpaper. There are also three bedrooms and 3.5 bathrooms. The common rooms at Priscilla's pad have white oak hardwood underfoot, and there's also a front foyer that connects to the main living room. This pink walled room is dreamy to say the least, and there are features here like a white stone fireplace and a tucked away and chic wet bar in one corner. Nearby rooms include the formal dining room, which opens up to a balcony, and a casual style den with entertainment features like an upgraded sound system. There's also a fresh looking open plan kitchen that's done up in all white with marble finishing and top of the line Wolf and Sub-Zero appliances, making her kitchen look pretty glamorous. 
There's one powder room in the condo, while all three of the bedrooms have their own ensuite baths too. Priscilla's master suite is definitely the nicest of all, featuring a crystal chandelier in the bedroom, as well as a luxury attached bath covered in marble. There's also dual vanities here, a makeup station, a steam shower, and skylights overhead. Considering this isn't your average condo complex, residents of Le Parc, including Miss Presley, have to pay about $2,900 per month in condo fees. This price provides Priscilla with access to all the amenities here including two private parking spots, 24-7 guard-gated security, a swimming pool, tennis courts, and a clubhouse. On top of her penthouse, there's also a rooftop terrace with pool and garden views. In December 2020, Priscilla Presley sold her longtime estate in Beverly Hills, where she had lived for decades, an Italian-style villa she purchased a few years after her divorce from Elvis. The ex-couple had an amicable relationship after their split, and they wanted to live close to each other to make it easier for him to visit their daughter, the late Lisa Marie Presley. Elvis lived close by in Holmby Hills at the time. Priscilla listed the sprawling, private one-acre estate for $16 million initially, but after a price drop, she sold it a few months later for $13 million, which was still a great profit. The opulent abode spanned nearly 9,000 square feet of space inside along with seven bedrooms, nine bathrooms, and a handful of amazing amenities. According to the listing description, nearly every room opens out to lush gardens, terraces, and rolling lawns. And sitting on prime real estate in the 90210 area, the property sure is a treat, further being gated and secured to give residents the ultimate privacy. Priscilla's former home was built back in 1951 and updated since while being meticulously cared for over the years. Past the exterior of the home, which is draped in vines, there are common rooms featuring high, vaulted ceilings with exposed wood beams and dark hardwood floors underneath. A formal living room features an elegant fireplace front and center as well as front doors out to the yard. There's also a formal dining room with an old world charm and a crystal chandelier above, while a more casual dining nook is set nearby. Another sitting room features wood paneled walls, a massive fireplace, and cozy furnishings, while the mansion's main staircase seems to wind up high towards the upper level, also offering double height ceilings and another chandelier. I love the charming and glam interiors of this home, so I can imagine it was so hard for Priscilla to let it go. Other grand features throughout the home included the master suite, which boasted yet another chandelier in the bedroom, more beautiful ceilings, a fireplace, and a private balcony. There was also an attached bath with an oversized sunken tub, sitting area, shower stall, and vanity. Outside, the residence was decked out with multiple gardens and lush greenery, as well as terraces and patios to relax on and stone walkways, all adding to the beauty. There were even fountains and other romantic touches outside, like an outdoor fireplace and covered seating. Finally, Priscilla's property was complete with a tennis court and a large swimming pool out back. In September 2020, a home where Priscilla and Elvis once lived together ended up selling for just over $29 million. Located in the exclusive Platinum Triangle area of Los Angeles on the border of Beverly Hills and Homby Hills. After Priscilla and Elvis split in the early 70s, she continued to live in this home for three years with Lisa Marie. The recent sale, which went for $29.3 million, included the main house, a 144 Monoville Drive, and this is the 1.6 acre parcel of land where the Presleys lived, as well as the neighboring 120 Monoville Drive, a 0.75 acre parcel of land. Since the Presleys lived here, the home has underwent several renovations. The seven bedroom main house now boasts a Tudor style facade with leaded glass windows, archways, and a high pitched roof. The property also boasts a dual tennis basketball court, plus a pool, two guest houses, and a garage. At the end of 2022, Elvis and Priscilla Presley's one time honeymoon home popped back up on the market for $5.6 million. Back in 1967, the king of rock and roll enjoyed married life with his new bride Priscilla in this Palm Springs, California home. The Presleys couldn't help falling in love with this unique mid-century modern spread which was dubbed the House of Tomorrow by Look Magazine in 1962. Elvis and Priscilla honeymooned at this 4,695 square foot property for a year after their wedding, costing them a total 
total of $21,000. Inside this futuristic looking house boasts four bedrooms, three full bathrooms, and other bonuses like an at-home spa. The William Crystal designed home has a spaceship-like interior and was considered ahead of its time when it was built in 1960. Its interesting amenities include an indoor kitchen grill, vacuum ports, and wall-mounted radios. Four circular stones lead to the textured front doors, and inside the main living room features a stone wall lined with built-in seating facing directly towards the fireplace and floating earth. The dining room of the home sits on an elevated platform overlooking the living area, while views of the mountains and palm trees can be taken in through the floor-to-ceiling glass walls. The kitchen includes a massive hood over the oval-shaped center island that offers a five built-in burners and a second living space with a fireplace sits next to the kitchen. Upstairs, the master bedroom reveals endless windows along a curved wall, showing off the mountains and landscape. Then, the primary bath has double sinks aligning the walls as well as a generously sized bathtub. Outside of Priscilla's former honeymoon home, the irregularly shaped pool is equipped with a hot tub and surrounded by a patio with plenty of room for lounging. While we've looked at a few of Priscilla Presley's properties for a look at Graceland where she also lived for many years, be sure to check out our Lisa Marie Presley house tour or our Elvis house tour. Actress Molly Ringwald was one of the biggest stars of the 80s, thanks in large part to her collaborative relationship with filmmaker John Hughes in movies like The Breakfast Club, Pretty in Pink, and of course, 16 Candles. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. By the end of that decade, teenage girls all around North America wanted to be Molly Ringwald themselves. Now more than 30 years later, many of her former fans would still like to be experiencing her city lifestyle that included living in Paris throughout much of the 1990s, while also owning a stunning New York City co-op. Property records are somewhat vague as to just when Molly originally purchased her longtime home in the Big Apple, but the general consensus is that she snagged the two bedroom and one and a half bathroom duplex apartment sometime before 2004 upon her return to America after living abroad. Located in the Renwick Triangle on East 10th Street in the heart of St. Mark's Historic District, this lovely co-op spans the top two floors of a five-story house. It was originally constructed in 1858 by architect James Renwick Jr., the same man who designed St. Patrick's Cathedral, Grace Church, and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. What makes this home the very perfect place to start your own breakfast club, though? Well, I'm glad you asked. Highlights of this chic space include 10 foot tall ceilings with exposed wood beams as well as a carved marble fireplace that anchors the stunning living room. Then there's the kitchen with its utilitarian stainless steel countertops. Yes, that's countertops, not just appliances. As well as vintage range in this south facing even space with four windows that allow for tons of light. Elsewhere on the main floor and located just off a short hall that links the living room to the kitchen is the unit's half bathroom, one that could be converted into a larger washroom if needed. Upstairs you'll discover the co-op's two bedrooms, a larger one of which boasts yet another carved marble fireplace and an exposed brick wall. Both of these rooms share a small bathroom that's been lined floor to ceiling with brick shaped beige stone tiles. The primary selling point of this home however is its private rooftop terrace that offers city views overlooking the Chrysler Building, One World Trade Center, and the near by gothic beauty of Grace Church on Lower Broadway. After owning this home for close to a dozen years, Molly would eventually decide to uproot herself from New York City, listing this property for $1.795 million. After two months on the open market, Molly would successfully sell her former home for more or less what she was asking, $1.7 million. The new owner then became Alexei Lubomirsky, an accomplished fashion photographer who also just so happens to be a Polish prince. 
As for Molly, well, apparently she and her husband, writer Panyo Giannopoulos, had in the past opted to rent the majority of their homes for most of their adult lives in Santa Monica, California. According to sources, their plan was to return to the West Coast and continue doing just that. But as for where she lives specifically right now, that's anyone's guess. That being said, there is one last home for us to take a look at that has some very specific and unshakable ties to Molly Ringwald. Yes, I'm talking about the real world house that she shot a large portion of 16 candles inside of, a property that was recently up for sale itself. If you grew up in the 1980s, then there's almost no way you don't remember the hit films of John Hughes. Weird Science, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, he was easily one of the most accomplished filmmakers of the decade and produced even more hits than he directed. But few of his films resonated with audiences quite as much as the smash hit 16 Candles. One of the most popular coming of age films ever made, 16 Candles revolves around the lovesick Samantha Baker, played by Molly Ringwald, who struggles to get through her 16th birthday when it winds up getting overshadowed by her older sister's wedding. Thanks for getting Mandy's back. Thanks for coming over. A large part of this film was actually shot inside a house on Payne Street in Evanston, Illinois, and that location left nearly as big of an impression on audiences as Ringwald's performance would. For starters, take a look at that brick exterior. I'll tell you this, they don't make them like that anymore. And better yet, that red brick facade has remained largely unchanged over the past three decades. Of course, the interior of this home has stepped up its game over the years, sporting a far more elegant and sophisticated look now than it ever did before. Gone are those busy old fashioned wallpapers that lined nearly every room in the movie, replaced with solid contemporary colors ranging from light gray and taupe to cream and seafoam green. Meanwhile, the dated wheat colored carpets that once coated the staircase and entire main level have been torn out to reveal hardwood floors. And when it comes to the layout, the front foyer leads directly into three main spaces. A living room on the left hand side, a formal dining room to the right, as well as the home's airy family room with its large picture windows, big screen TV, and plenty of storage space. The kitchen has been totally remodeled since the 80s and now it includes state-of-the-art appliances, custom cabinets, a cozy breakfast nook set against a chalkboard wall, and smooth granite counters. Heading on up, the wooden staircase will take you to the second floor, which houses five of the home's six bedrooms, including the master suite that offers ample space and comes complete with a walk-in closet, as well as a luxury bathroom. Continuing on up one more flight of stairs, there's the sixth and final bedroom, as well as what's now the home's media center, a space that was previously used in 16 Candles as Sam's pink-clad iconic bedroom. All of that, and we've still got one more floor to check out because down in the basement you'll find a colossal rec room with a fireplace along with other mandatory utilities like storage and laundry. Last but not least the backyard comes fully equipped with a tiled patio, outdoor kitchen, a wood burning fireplace surrounded by an al fresco dining area and patio complete with an outdoor TV. Even without its Hollywood history the home would be the perfect place to raise a growing family. The only thing you're gonna need a sizable budget to claim it. After originally purchasing the property back in 2006, the home's owner and investment banker Stephen Miles listed the house in 2016 for $1.49 million. Over the next two years, the property would be on and off the market at a variety of price points, including as low as $1.19 million in December 2017. The property finally sold in June 2018 for $1.135 million. In other words, if this peek inside an iconic Hollywood setting has tempted you into one day owning the house yourself, then you should start saving your pennies right now. Or at the very least, next time it's your birthday, you know exactly what to wish for. All right, everyone, that is gonna bring this Molly Ringwald house tour to a close. Thanks for watching, and before you head out, ask yourselves this question. If you could live in any real life house, it's been used in a Hollywood movie, which one would it be? Let me know what famous home you've always had your eye on and why in the comments down below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications before you go. My name is Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat more and I'll see you all in another video. Bye!